Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be doing the binomial series. So let's discuss what a binomial series is. So just like the power series and the Taylor series, the binomial series is another way to express functions in terms of a series, which can then potentially be used for other kind of calculations such as approximations and other things. So let's talk about how a binomial series works and what exactly is a binomial series. So by, de by definition, a binomial series or a binomial is any, any equation written in this form. So it's 1 plus x to the power of k. And then this kind of expansion can be written as a binomial series, which is defined by the following. So the binomial series is a summation from n equals 0 to infinity of k choose n so this is the permutations and combinations portion so this is a combination so the n c k notation so sometimes it's written as k n something like that so sometimes it's written as k c n kind of like that but regardless this is a combination of x to the power of n is equal to 1 plus k x plus k times k minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed and then we keep adding terms. So just as a quick recap, the combination coefficient right there so combinations, this can be written as the following. So this is the same as k times k minus 1 times k minus 2, and then we keep multiplying terms, so times dot dot dot, times k minus n plus 1, and then we divide this by the following expression. So we divide this by n factorial. And then the assumption that is given is that kc0, so k choose 0, we assume that is equal to 1, because there's only one way to select 0 objects from a collection of objects, so that's just 1. So this so occasionally we want to express this kind of function in terms of series for certain situations. Not always, but this can be potentially be useful on occasion. So let's do two very simple examples, and that will be it for this video. So this will be a fairly short video. So let's do the first one. So find the Maclaurin series for f of x is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 plus x. Now, I should note, this is this doesn't quite look like a binomial, but we can express this in a sort of binomial way um, expansion, kind of like this. So we can write this thing as one plus x to the minus one over two, because that's the exact same thing as the original. It's just written using a negative exponent because we want it to look like this, which it currently does now. So in this case, in this case, uh, k is equal to minus one over two. So now if you go ahead and write this expansion out, we get one plus x to the minus one over two is equal to one plus minus one over two times x. And then plus, well, let me just kind of actually write this expansion down so we have a copy of this. And then you can kind of follow along what I'm actually doing as my substitutions. So let me just put this down here. And move this here. Okay, so this is going to be 1 plus x to the minus 1 over 2, or more generally, f of x, actually. Can be written in this form. Or actually, I should be really clear about this and write 1 plus x to the power of k, just to be very precise in this. But anyways, so in this case, k is equal to minus 1 over 2. So we plug in the minus 1 over 2 here, plug it in here, here, and so on. So let's go ahead and keep doing this. 
So next term, we'll get minus 1 over 2 times minus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared, and then plus minus 1 over 2 times minus 1 over 2 minus 1 times minus 1 over 2 minus 2. And then we divide this by 3 factorial, x to the power of 3, and then we keep adding terms. Okay, but now if you simplify this thing, you'll get the following result. So you'll get 1 minus 1 over 2 times x plus, okay, now notice that we can move these down into the denominator after we combine these thing. So if you combine this portion, you'll get minus 1 over 2 minus 1. So we get minus 1 minus 2 over 2 or minus 3 over 2. So we get minus 3 over 2, which we can then pull out down the denominator. So if we go ahead and simplify this thing, we'll get the following. And then notice that the minus signs can also be kind of pulled out and combined. So in this case, both of these will have a negative sign, so this will become a positive. So overall, we can pull the 2 into the denominator, and we'll get the following on the top. So we'll get 1 times 3. And the twos that are combined that come from combining this term from this term can go to the bottom. And we have two of them, so we get two squared on the bottom times two factorial. Okay. And then in this case, for example, we'll have one times three, because when we combine this fraction, we'll get minus two over two. When we combine this fraction, we'll get a for minus five over two. So if you keep multiplying the terms out, you'll get and then this will be a negative now because we have a negative times negative times a negative, which will overall give us a negative. So we get minus 1 times 3 times 5. And then we would divide this by, there's 3 2s now, so we get 2 to the power 3 times 3 factorial x cubed, x squared. I forgot that expression there. And then we keep adding terms. Okay. So if you write this as a series, well, we're going to get the following. The 1 is irrelevant. We can just kind of leave it out because it doesn't follow any kind of meaningful pattern in these things. So we can just kind of keep it out as, as is. So the 0 term is ignored, and then we start with the n equals first term. So our summation, as a result, is going to start from n equals 1, and it's going to go to infinity. Of Well, it's going to be minus 1 to the power of n. Because for every odd number of terms, or I guess more specific, yeah, for every odd number of terms starting from the first term, it's going to be negative. So, for, for example, when I plug in 2, it's going to be positive. When I plug in 3, it's going to be negative, and so on and so on and so on. So, that's good. And then we notice that this is going to be 1 times 3 times 5 times dot dot dot. So, we can just kind of write it like that. So, 1 times 3 times 5. In fact, I'm just going to write it like this. And then we just keep multiplying terms. And then, as you notice, the terms are just going to eventually just getting, are going to be odd numbers. So if you keep multiplying terms out, you'll just get 2n minus 1. Okay, and on the bottom, the terms are going to become 2 to the n. And then this is going to become n factorial. And that should be good. So, and then the x term, that's going to become x to the power of n. And that right there is going to be our series. So, that right there is our final answer. So, let me just make sure that this works. So, n equals 1. We plug in negative 1 to the power of 1. So, that's negative. Good. And our first term is indeed a 1. So, that's good. The next term is a 1, a 3, and so on and so on. So if you plug in a 1 here, we get a 1. If you plug in a 2 here, we get a 3. If you plug in a 3 here, we get a 5. So all the expansions seem to be working out perfectly. On the bottom, we get 2 to the n, because 2 to the 1 is 1. 2 to the 1, 2 is 2. 2 to the 3 is 3, and so on. And then we get n factorial. So 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, and 1 factorial is just 1, so we can just kind of ignore it. Although if you prefer, you could just write 1, 1 over 2 times 1 factorial, but this is completely unnecessary. Nevertheless, and the, exp and the x terms all increase by 1 power every time. So it just seems to be consistent, and we're good to go. Okay, let's do the next and final example in this video. 
Okay, so use the binomial series to write 1 plus x over 3 minus x squared over 9 plus 5x cubed over 81, and then we keep adding the terms and subtracting as necessary, as a function. Okay, this is actually fairly straightforward. So let's kind of use the fact that 1 plus x to the power of k, by definition, is 1 plus kx plus k times k minus 1 over 2 factorial x to the squared, and then k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed plus dot dot dot. Now, let's kind of compare the coefficients just to do what this expansion is about. Well, if you, the first term matches with a 1, so that's good. If you match the next term, we can kind of see that k equals 1 over 3. Very interesting. Let's see if our hypothesis kind of holds true. So it's probably k equals 1 over 3. Let's see if the rest of this works. So the next term, for example, we get 1 over 9. Does that work here? Well, if you plug in 1 over 3 here, we should theoretically get minus 1 over 9. Do we? Well, we get 1 over 3 times 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2 factorial. Well, let's take a look here. 1 over 3 times 1 minus 3 over 3. Well, that's equal to 1 over 3 times minus 2 over 3, which is going to be equal to minus 2 over 9. But then we divide this by 2 factorial, which is 2. And if you go ahead and do that, we get minus 2 over 9 times 1 over 2, which by definition is minus 1 over 9, which is what we have here. So we're good to go. So as we can see, our hypothesis is right, and then k, and this implies directly that k equals 1 over 3. Okay, how does this help us? Well, from just reading off the first term, we can just tell our function f of x, by definition, is 1 plus x to the power of minus 1 over 3. And that is it. There's nothing too special about this example. We can kind of compare coefficients and see what kind of function we have. And that covers this example, and that also covers this video and the re examples I wanted to go over. So if you have any questions about any concepts we went over, let me know in the comments below, and I can, I'll can i be happy to answer. But I always if this video helped you. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll greatly appreciate it. Thank you all so much, and have a great day.